And while TikTok's fate may be decided by Congress, it's just one app in a sea of them that goes largely unregulated by the government. Join us now is Frank McCourt. He's the founder and executive chairman of Project Liberty, an organization whose mission is to give people greater rights and control when it comes to the Internet. His new book is titled Our Biggest Fight, Reclaiming Liberty, Humanity and Dignity in the Digital Age. Frank, good morning. It's great to have you here. Obviously, a uh, very successful businessman, run, run a big company, you own the Los Angeles Dodgers for a time, but you really have made this your issue. So let's just explain for our viewers as we begin here, what you view as this fight? What are we up against here? Yeah, so um, I wrote our biggest fight to, to shed light on a, a project that we started called Project Liberty, which is really to reimagine how the internet works and uh, to reclaim our, not just our data, but what I would call our personhood in the digital age and um, regain control of it from the machines of big tech. I mean, we, we talk endlessly about the harms of, of the internet today. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's time we focus on what's fundamentally wrong and, and fix it. And that's what this project is all about. So you've committed half a billion dollars through Project Liberty to, the, to this fight. How do you attack something that seems so difficult to get your arms around that is, in fact, unregulated? These apps that are so popular that despite the harms they cause that young people in particular are addicted to, where do you begin? Yeah, it, well, it's, it, I'm so interested in this conversation about TikTok because it's, um, of, of course, it's unique because it's a national security issue. However, all of these platforms, all of these apps you refer to are all based on the same model, which is uh, basically a kind of a take our data, scrape it, aggregate it, apply algorithms. So it's, un it's unhealthy, right? And, and we talk about the First Amendment issue. We talk a little about the Fourth Amendment, right, which is search and seizure. Why on earth would we be allowing all of our data to be uh, taken and, uh, and owned, controlled, by any third party. I think we need to fix how the internet works. So rather than it being all about devices and data, we put individuals in charge of their data. And so this, this project is, is really highlighting the fact that this is a, an, an infrastructure problem and we can fix it. If we fix the engineering and put you and I in charge of our data, then we have a new evolved internet where the new apps are clicking on our terms of use for our data, so, so is, we get to control our privacy and our data. Well, I was going to ask you, Frank, how would that work as a practical question? It does feel in some ways like the genie's out of the bottle. We've already all given up so much over the last decade, 20 years, whatever it's been. Every time you sign up for something, you give up a little piece of yourself. How do you attack something that's gone so far down the road? Stop giving up little pieces of yourself mindlessly and endlessly to these big platforms. So, um, you know, technology is, look, I'm a fifth generation builder. Okay, so my family's been building things for over 130 years, and, and much of it is infrastructure, including internet systems. So we need to just, you know, this is a uh, just technology. It's designed and engineered in a certain way. Right now, it prioritizes machines, uh, devices, and links data. Why not link people? Why not just put us in charge of our data? And then we could do all the things that we do with the internet, but rather than go, be, be in this endless cycle of debate about the harms and discussions like, how are we gonna put out that fire? How are we gonna mitigate that harm? Why on earth are we giving up our data? If I was the head of the postal service and I said to you, hey, I'm gonna deliver your mail for free, other than being a little suspicious, you'd probably say, okay, tell me about that deal. Mm -hmm. I said, well, the deal is I'm gonna put cameras in every room of your house. I'm gonna open your mail and I'm gonna read it. And what I read and learn is now mine, your relationships, your ideas and so forth. And oh, by the way, I'm gonna read your 13 year old daughter's diary. And if she's concerned about her weight, I've got some stuff to sell her. Mm. I'm gonna actually profit from a 13 year old's vulnerability. It's ridiculous. It's not, it, it's, it, we need to start thinking about this as it's, it's our data and start focusing a little bit more on the Fourth Amendment and a little less on the First Amendment. Frank, the stories about the impact on children and teenagers are especially horrifying. The mental health issues that come from using this technology. What could be done in the near term? What is the most feasible policy solution to protect children and young adults as they're maturing and using this technology? We now know the harms and uh, especially the harms to children. This is fact. The CEOs of these companies are not fixing it. Our politicians are not fixing it. So what we need to do is take matter into our own hands. And we can fix this. 
And I think that's two things. One, as I mentioned, fix the technology. But Project Liberty is really not even a tech project. It's a social project, a civic project. We need to talk about this issue. We need to talk about this at the kitchen table. We need to talk about this on the sidelines of the soccer, our kids' soccer matches. Yeah, we need to talk about it after church. We need to go into schools and say, what's being done about this? This is a crisis. The harm is not only That's to right. kids. The harm is also yeah. to democracy, right? It's undermined. We're not yes. even governable anymore. It's because this very technology that I'm talking about is polarizing us. It's designed to do that. So if we mm -hmm. fix it, take control of our data rather than be controlled, then we can begin to solve the problem. Yeah, as the old 100%. saying goes, if you're not paying for a product, you are the product. Frank, I want to read you the lead editorial in the Wall Street Journal today, just one part of it that speaks to how blindly we are all flying and we don't understand how our society, how our political system uh, is being hacked, uh, sometimes by uh, people who consider themselves America's enemy. The hitch in, in taking over uh, TikTok may be that TikTok's algorithms are controlled by ByteDance engineers in China who answer to the Chinese Communist Party. The Chinese Communist Party placed export restrictions on its algorithms. TikTok's U.S. operations may be sold, but not the key technology that powers the app, the South China Morning Post reported. So here we see it's the algorithms, the algorithms that the Chinese Communist Party wants to hold, the algorithms, and I'm not comparing uh, Xi to Zuckerberg, but it's still the, the algorithms that Zuckerberg says, oh, are just uh, far too complicated for us to explain to you, and they're ours uh, anyway. And you go down the list. We are flying blind on how these companies are manipulating our children, manipulating us, manipulating our democracy. Yeah, well, that's the problem, Joe. We, we have, uh, the reason I, uh, I, I cite Thomas Paine in the book, and, and, and he was really kind of the, uh, the inspiration is, you know, in 1775, before this great country was started, he put a very simple choice forward to his, his fellow settlers, you know, the, in, in what was not even the, the 13 colonies. And he said something, mm -hmm. look, do you, you have a choice. Do you want to continue to be a subject of a, a monarch or do you want to be a citizen? And a citizen comes with rights, human rights and property rights and so forth. And thankfully, our forebears chose, chose citizenship and this great country was created. We're at a similar moment right now because, and this is the point I make in the book, we have become subjects in this digital age. Our data, it, and again, please don't think about it as data. It's who we are. Everything about us is now digitized. So in this age, our personhood is now owned by someone else. Joe, you don't own you. You know, I don't own me. We're owned by these, these platforms. We need to fix that and be digital citizens, not di digital subjects. And then we can begin to look at how democracy works in a digital age. But